Today, I have just uh, 10 minutes to try to explain you how to send a, a photo from Mars. So this is a quite a hard task. So I will try to be very short and just to focus on the most important uh, data and uh, problems. Uh, so the, uh, the problem to send the photo, you know, uh, the size of a photo is approximately 1500 uh, megabytes. And the big problem that is under your eyes is that uh, the distance be between Mars and Earth is quite large. It actually oscillates depending on the orbits the position of the planets, uh, but it goes from 0 0.5 to 2.6 astronomical units that corresponds uh, to like 75 to 400 millions kilometers. There you can see in the uh, bottom graph uh, uh, how this distance oscillates during the years. In the next 20 years, it goes up and down. And uh, so the problem is how to send uh, the, this information in such a large distance. We have to fix a very important parameter of the, before starting considering the problem is the frequency, the carrier frequency that we need to use typically in deep space communication, they use the, what is called the X-band. X-band is a range of frequency between eight and 12 gigahertz. And this, in this example, just to have some number, I will use the frequency of eight gigahertz. Okay, so we have this huge distance and what we should do to transmit. And here I'm following the analogy with the talking. So the first thing is start the talking loudly and speaking loudly, so the power of the transmitter should be quite large. The most important equation that we will use here is the freeze transmission equation that relates the received power from one antenna to the transmitted power, the geometry of the system and the gain of the antennas. You see it here. So we will start trying to increase in this equation this the power of transmitter, the red parameter. And keeping in mind that the denominator here, the square of the distance is called the free space propagation that depends on the square of the distance. And in this case, this is a very small number. In this case, the, the attenuation is, uh, the gain if you want, is 3.16 times 10 to the minus 28. So actually the received power is, is attenuated very much. In dB, if you are familiar with dB, this corresponds to minus 275 dB. Otherwise, you just look to the ball face number. So it's a really, really tiny number and uh, the, the power of transmitter is attenuated by this amount. Unfortunately, in our problem, we cannot put, make this uh, transmitted power too, la too large because we are considering the so-called downlink from Mars down to Earth. And on Mars, we are representing here the rover or some uh, device that is transmitting that is quite small. The available power there is not that large. So in practice, this power is 4.6 watt. That is very small, it's not uh, impressive. While for example, if you consider the uplink, the available power on the transmitter antenna is like 20 kilowatts, very different. But here we, we focus on the bottom part, the downlink. So this number cannot be very large. So what we can do now is to try to increase the gain of the transmitter and the gain of the receiver, the antenna gain. And so this is the second uh, aspect of the problem to increase the size of the antenna. So this fundamental two factor that you see at the denominator, basically they are related to the diameter of the antennas. And basically, if you want to compute this gain of the antenna, you take the diameter of the antenna, you divide it by the wavelength, and this is why the frequency is so important. So basically, the diameter of the antenna is measured in terms of number of wavelengths. So the bigger is this number, the higher is the gain, and then you take the square of it. So you can have a pretty large number here, and you can insert the gain on the transmitter, uh, on the transmitter and the gain of a receiver. Of course, again, in this case, at the transmitter, we have just a small antenna, like the parabola that you have on your roof, like 70 centimeter, the one that is called the eye gain 
antenna on the rover is a very small antenna, actually 70 centimeter, while the gain, high gain antenna in the Earth is like 70 meter. Okay, so a big difference. You see here the images of the two uh, antenna. So the gain for the uh, antenna at the receiver is like 73 dB, that corresponds to 26 million time amplification of the signals, while the gain at the transmitter is only 760. So pretty small. You need to take the product of the two. And then you also have to take care of pointing losses, especially high directive antenna uh, have a big loss if you make the wrong positioning. So you need to have a very stable mechanism for pointing your antenna, especially the high directive antenna. So you have some pointing loss, but this is a minor thing. Anyway, so if you put together the freeze equation, what you end up is that the received power is 10 femtowatt, that is 10 times 10 to the minus 15. So a very tiny number with respect to the 4.6 watt that you were transmitting. So the point is, can we get some information with this, such a tiny number? Of course, everything depends on the background noise. So uh, the point is now you're not only receiving from the antenna your signal, but you're also receiving some so-called background noise. That is what the antenna is catching from the background, basically. And OK, there is a very simple equation that relates the background noise to the temperature of the object, if you want, that you're looking to. That is the, this one. You have to take the Boltzmann constant and multiply by the so-called system temperature. In order to compute the system temperature, you need to do some operation. It depends on several factors. But uh, mostly, especially in this case, it depends on the where you're looking to. So if you're looking to the space, luckily, the temperature is quite low. And this is why in this case, uh, the, the temperature uh, that is used in this uh, leak budget, so call is 25.5 Kelvin. That is very, very small. OK, so it's close to zero. While, for example, when you, you do terrestrial communication, you are close to 270 uh, Kelvin. So due to this small temperature, because you are looking to the sky, the background noise is not that large. Is actually it's very small. It's 3.5 times 10 to the minus 22. So very low background noise that translates in minus 184 decibel. So you have a very tiny signal with a very tiny uh, background noise. Now the problem is how much we can tolerate of this noise. And now here comes the magic of channel codes. Channel codes are uh, a very important block that you find in all transmitter and receiver in modern digital communication. It is a peculiarity of digital communication. Basically, the, the idea is pretty simple. You insert some redundancy, so you add some bit to be transmitted in such a way that uh, at the receiver, you can correct the errors due to the background noise. So the noise is introducing error and you can correct it. And uh, in order to do this, uh, you need to send at actually higher speed. So suppose you have uh, your throughput, your data speed is S, then you insert in bit. So instead of sending S bit per second, you're sending B bit per second, that is larger. And the rate of the code is called is this ratio, S divided by B. So if you reduce the rate of the code, that means that you're inserting more redundancy, you can correct more error. That is the main idea. So your signal that is traveling at, uh, through 400 million kilometers will arrive here, very tiny signal with some background noise and with some errors. And the other decoder will be able to remove those errors. And uh, actually there is a very simple example here. I cannot go into the detail in 10 minutes. So I make this very simple example of a repetition code where you pick, a, you want to transmit a zero, instead you transmit three zero. You want to transmit a one, you transmit three one. And then at the receiver, what you do, you simply take a majority rule. So if there is the number of one that is larger than the number of zero, you decode a one, otherwise you decode a zero and that's it. Uh, and of course, this very, very simple example has the capability of uh, correcting error. So if you transmit three zero, you receive 001, that is not a possible code word, and you decide for majority, so you decide it has been transmitted as zero. So you're correcting the error that has been introduced by the channel. That is the very simple idea. 
Of course, this is just a, a toy example. You can do much, much better by uh, increasing the cone length and decreasing the code rate, so inserting more redundancy. And there is also, and this is very nice, some uh, uh, theory, information theory is a very important and powerful tool that we have that actually establish what you can do with codes. And actually there is this fundamental limit that you can find from information theory that tells you that basically, if you want to transmit the reliably a bit, uh, you need to send an energy associated with that information bit that is larger than 0 0.7 times the background noise, that is M0. So if you are above this limit, so if you can transmit more than this energy on uh, your channel, then there exists a code that is capable of recovering totally that bit. So you can remove and uh, transmit that uh, bit reliably. So the point is achieving this energy per bit greater than this threshold that depends on the noise. Of course, this limits all when uh, the code rate goes down to zero. So you introduce very low code rate and infinite code size. In practice, what we use in this space communication are codes that have a rate uh, equal to one sixth, the minimum one. So it's not zero, it's one sixth. And the information packet size not infinity is only 10,000 roughly. So as a result of this uh, suboptimality, actually the threshold from 0 0.7 becomes 0 0.99. So we need to have, uh, collect more than uh, 0 0.99 background noise energy on, on each bit. So how, much, how can you receive that amount of energy if you have a fixed amount of power? Of course, you need to reduce the information bit rate. You need to go down, to go slowly, speak slowly. So basically the very simple equation is that the, the energy that you collect for each transmitted bit is equal to the power you're receiving divided by the throughput S. So this has to be greater than 0 0.7, the background noise. So this basically means that the throughput is upper bounded. You have an upper bound given by the received power divided by the level of background noise times zero seven, very simple. Everything is very simple. This is a theoretical result, however. This, you, you know that you cannot achieve better than this. So if you put the numbers that we just introduced in this equation, you get this maximum bound. So basically with the geometry, that amount of power, that antenna, we can implement a 42 kilobit per second model. That is reasonable. I mean, we are establishing a connection with the mass so we can be happy. Actually, in practice, we are not so far from this theoretical limit and we can achieve, uh, we can build a modem around 20 kilobit per second. Of course, I, I omitted many, many details in all this treatment, especially the fact, for example, there is a, a changing in the position, changing of the distance. There are some other <laughs> source of attenuation, but this more or less is what you can do. And actually we can do much better. You know, we can communicate with Pluto and go much uh, farther than Mars, but this is just an example. Okay, so that concludes my uh, talk. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Anche in Italian. If you are in Italian, of course, don't be shy. I parlo anche italiano, anzi, parlo meglio in italiano. Okay, see. Ovviamente sì, ho fatto un sacco di semplificazioni. <laughs> per esempio, non si trasmette veramente dalla Terra a, a rover, si trasmette dal rover a un satellite su, su Marte e poi alla Terra. No, ma questo. In certe situazioni però si trasmette direttamente, quando si il rover sta atterrando, allora in quel caso ci sono comunicazioni dirette, altrimenti c'è un ponte radio cosiddetto. Vabbè. Ok, va bene, almeno eravate in tanti, grazie di essere venuti.
<coughs> okay. Back to it, English. Welcome. So I'm Marco Melia. I'm also a professor here in Politecnico. And I'm going to introduce you to what's inside your smartphone. Have you ever opened a smartphone when it crashes at some point? Yes. OK. So inside the smartphone, there is something like this. And you identify different uh, parts. You have the batteries, you have the electronic circuits, you have the, uh, what is the antennas, you have the cameras and everything, right? Now imagine you want to build a smartphone, like, like this one. Uh, how many uh, information, what, what, what's the challenge here? So let, let's go a bit uh, more into details. Okay, this is the same smartphone, pretty much. Uh, okay, you have circuit boards, so this green part uh, over here. You have the microprocessor, the CPU or the graphic processor, which is probably one of the blocks uh, down here. You have some memory, you have some batteries, you have the display, you have the cameras, and that's what you touch, right? So in the smartphone, you have this. And then there is something that is a bit less uh, immediate, and that's exactly what uh, uh, Professor Montorsi was explaining you, how to transmit and how to receive. So you need a modem, and that was the antenna, the rover and the antenna here, then you need the antennas and so on and so forth. And then you have sensors here and there. So let's go into the electronic part. Okay, you have the circuit board, here it's bluish. You have the processors, which is probably one of these two black boxes here. The other one is probably the memory. And then you have the sensors uh, and the connectors. Uh, here is a camera, here's another camera, front and back camera, you know, and connectors here and there. Now, if you want to build something like this, you need some notion about uh, uh, circuit theory and possibly applications. You need to, uh, to know what is an electronic device, so one of these chips. You need to know what is an electronic circuit, so how to connect uh, uh, these pieces together to make a circuit. You need to know a bit of applied electronics so because this is working in practice, not just in theory. You need to do some measurement because you want to test if the connection is working or if when something is not working, what you want to do. And you need to know about digital uh, communication, digital system, because today everything is digital. You were born in a digital era, right? At least that's what I've been told. Okay, that's the electronic. Now this, the communication part. When you send a, a message via WhatsApp, your phone needs to talk exactly like the Mars rover has to do and send a picture using modem, so modulator and the modulators. That's what uh, you have been hearing before. And you need antenna. So these are tiny things that you typically don't know they are there, but they are very important. Otherwise you will not be able to transmit or receive anything, right? And now, if you want to go into details uh, how to build a communication system, you need to know about electronic, uh, uh, electromagnetic waves, antennas, signals, and systems, uh, how to transmit uh, uh, digital transmission, how to code uh, a bit uh, into a, a, wave, a wave signal, communication networks, because it's not just uh, Mars sending to uh, Earth. Uh, here, it's you sending to. Uh, servers uh, uh, or WhatsApp servers of you are about TikTok. No, you are still with Instagram, right? No. Okay, Instagram servers. So you need a network, you need the internet. Huh? And that's way more complex than just a, a channel between a sender and the receiver because there are many, many, many senders and receivers there. And then you need to do this in practice. So you, you will have to do this in labs, labs about applied signal processing, digital communications uh, and the like. Okay, what's missing? What you have in your phone? TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, not much, right? So you need software, right? So a bit of software, uh, which is not only the applications that you run, but also to glue together all these components, these days is done way more in software than in hardware. So also programming, the low part of the system. 
Uh, okay, software is something that you cannot touch, but uh, it's always there. And now, now you need to be to know a bit about computer science, a bit about algorithms and programming, how to find to find the route uh, between your phone and the Google server in a network, which is not trivial. Uh, okay, now if you put uh, everything together, we have the electronic, which is in red, we have the communication, which is in green, you have the bit of software, and clearly you need also to know math, physics, chemistry, so fundamentals. Now you put everything together, you have a electronic and communication engineering course, and that's what ECE, what is that? ECE uh, stays for. Uh, Split it is into three years. First year you do yellow, fundamentals, a bit of blue, a bit of green. Second year, a bit of yellow still, and electronic, you see the red part. And the third year, no more fundamentals, so you are done with math and physics, and you go into more uh, advanced uh, uh, communication, green, and uh, 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 computer science, a bit of blue, and electronics. So this is the course of electronic communication engineering. If you want, you can see this also in this pie chart. Okay, the yellow part is common to every course here in engineering because all classes or courses uh, do uh, math, physics, uh, and so. Here it's a bit uh, reddish and green and clearly also a bit of blue. So if you go to see other presentation, you will see less green, more blue, less uh, blue, more red, no, depending on if you are uh, more interested in electronics or uh, the software part uh, and so on and so forth. What's uh, specific about uh, the uh, Bachelor in Electronics uh, and Communication Engineering? It's uh, actually something that uh, we started uh, like seven years ago, yeah, 2015. It's in English. I say it's in English because uh, we are not uh, from uh, UK. Uh, the nice part is that there are a lot of uh, foreign students. So if you like uh, uh, being in touch with uh, other uh, cultures, uh, other uh, people from other uh, parts of the world, uh, pretty much half of the students you see here uh, <coughs> come from, uh, from abroad. That's also uh, something that is uh, uh, interesting, at least uh, to me. Um, it's, uh, well, it's one of the best courses you can get, definitely in Italy, uh, but also worldwide. So you see here, uh, this is this uh, QS uh, uh, world ranking. Uh, this course uh, is in the, 40, it's in the 45th position, including US, including UK, including Switzerland, uh, so including countries where uh, uh, typically you expect uh, uh, top universities to be. So we are kind, kind of proud of it. And actually, Guido is the guy that uh, designed the code uh, that lets uh, the Mars rover send the data to here, because we are also very close to research. Uh, and uh, so we can be a bit, uh, a bit proud of this. Uh, yeah, students are happy. OK, good. But this is pretty much for all uh, uh, polytechnic uh, classes. 9% are not so happy, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> what do you uh, expect to do with this course? Well, you enter in this ICT, Information and Communication Technologies area. It's from electronic to communication to software, so it's multidisciplinary. Uh, it covers th those techniques that are needed to store data, retrieve data, transmit data, uh, manipulate data, image processing, signal processing, uh, all this in electronic uh, uh, format, in digital format. And I mean, it's, it's about the internet, if you like. You spend uh, four hours on Instagram, so you know how to use it, not how to make it work. Um, applications, OK, fiber optics. If you stop by uh, the, the booth, uh, there are some fibers. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a, a, a fiber, uh, really a, a, a tiny fiber. Uh, circuits, uh, microprocessors, so integrated circuits as well. 
signal processing, as I was mentioning, a bit of artificial intelligence, but probably this is too much. This is something that you typically face in the master degree, not in the bachelor degree, but there is a bit of uh, introduction to this. Computer communication networks, I was mentioning the internet. So that's, that's the things that uh, you will face here. Labs, one of the advantages of this course is that there are uh, 120, 130 students, not 500. And when uh, uh, or you need to organize a course with labs, you can imagine that with 100 is way easier than with 500, right? So yeah, there are pictures, that's the electronic lab, you see uh, oscilloscopes, you see electronic devices and testers. This is a computer uh, lab where you do simulation on computers uh, and so on. <clears throat> and there are uh, uh, about uh, one fifth, yeah, 20% of the teaching uh, includes uh, lab part and so on part. Uh, if you like to move from Italy, from Torino, you can go to China very easily. You can go to Florida very easily because there are uh, uh, programs, exchange programs with uh, uh, China in Tongji and uh, in the University of the Southern Conference, Southwest, East, sorry, Southeast, Florida, and the like. It's pretty easy if you have uh, good, uh, good grades. There are a lot of uh, options here, a lot of opportunities to get some grant to spend the third year uh, abroad. Uh, what you will do, telecommunication system manager, uh, digital signal uh, uh, processing system design, and just reading this fast, uh, junior ICT designer, junior, you see this on the web, most likely you will continue studying because after three years of the bachelor, you will do two years of master. You see 87% of the students continue their education in a master degree, which can be uh, more focused on communication. So there is this communication engineering master degree, more uh, uh, toward the applications of ICT. So ICT for smart society, that's something in five years from now, so very far away. Well, clearly, you can do electronic engineering, so go deeper in the electronic part. And that's pretty much what you can do. You can even jump to computer uh, uh, engineering. I mean, this is a degree which is quite uh, uh, open to uh, any master in the ICT uh, area. What are the strengths? OK, I said it's uh, interdisciplinary. It's in English. It's uh, with people uh, uh, coming from uh, all part of the, of the world. It's end on, so there are labs here and there that uh, uh, allow you to do things, not just read the uh, slides. Uh, classes are not that big, so it's easier to interact also with students uh, and so on and so forth. I think I'm done, yeah. If you have any question, you can stop by, I mean, ask it here or stop by the booth, which is, I don't remember, somewhere here, and I get more information. There are students, if you don't want to talk to old guy with the white uh, hair, uh, feel free to ask students, no problem. Any question? See, uh, let, let me repeat the question for the one eventually listening from, from home. The question is, what's the main difference between this course and uh, computer engineering course? You see it here, right? So computer engineering will be way more blue, a bit less red, uh, and almost no green. So computer engineering is kind of a vertical course on software, software and software. If you like software, go for it. Uh, here it's more uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, there is a bit of blue, a bit of green, and a bit of red, uh, which also opens more opportunities because you are not just uh, blue, 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 blue. Uh, and then you can also have a more interdisciplinary approach. Uh, then there is the yellow part, which I was saying, in common with uh, mostly uh, most engineering courses. Thanks for the question. Did I answer? Any other question? Where are you from? Torino. 
not Torino. Wow. Oh. Now I'm, I should ask where, but it's, it's going to be complex. Which school? Uh, Liceo Scientifico. Non Liceo Scientifico. Well, classico. Tut tutti a dormire. Uh, Istituto Tecnico. Ok. So, il, per quelli che arrivano all'Istituto Tecnico sanno un po' meglio già alcune parti di elettronica e comunicazioni, probabilmente un po' di informatica, per gli altri sanno meglio la parte gialla. Ok? Se avete domande, fermatevi pure appunto a, allo stand. Io vi ringrazio. Sabato mattina è stata difficile, ma ce l'abbiamo fatta. Buon proseguimento.